Tommy has proposed to me again. Tommy really does nothing but propose to me. He proposed to me last night in the music room when I was quite unprotected, as there was an elaborate trio going on. I didn't dare make the smallest repartee, I need hardly tell you. If I had, it would have stopped the music at once. Musical people are so absurdly unreasonable. They always want one to be perfectly dumb at the very moment when one is longing to be absolutely deaf. Oh, and then he proposed to me in broad daylight this morning in front of that dreadful statue of Achilles. Really, the things that go on in front of that work of art are quite appalling. Tommy is so annoying in the way he proposes. If he was to propose at the top of his voice, I should not mind so much. That might produce some effect on the public. But he does it in a horrid, confidential way. When Tommy wants to be romantic, he talks to one just like a doctor. I'm very fond of Tommy, but his methods of proposing are quite out of date. You may say what you like. I can't agree that Teresina's quite as complex as you think she is. The man's asleep again. Flirting with the two of them. Spinning like a planet between her two poles. Here I am, left alone. Although this place is beautiful. Art. Pictures, statues, porcelains, but... That's not enough. There's no life. This life is giving the man softening of the brain. I'll never entertain again. People ought to know whether they're coming or not. But they accept and regret and regret and accept. A fiasco. An utter fiasco. They drive me wild. After this, I'm going to live for myself. I was jealous of every woman my first husband looked in the face. He was a portrait painter. Uh, the ideal man should talk to us like, like we're goddesses, but he should treat us like we're children. He should refuse all of our serious requests and um, gratify all of our whims. He should always say much more than he means. He should always mean much more than he says. And when we ask him a question about anything, he should always give us an answer all about ourselves. And um, he should invariably praise us for all the qualities that he knows we have not got. But he should never believe that we know the use of useful things because that would be unforgivable. My second husband suffered tortures of his own jealousy of your grandfather. That was premature but prophetic. For your dear grandfather was our neighbor in those days and he used to stand and look at me from his balcony. When I think of the times I've walked into my first husband's studio, shaking all over, to see what sort of woman he was painting this time, and how much of her. 
And of the times when I'd glance up at your grandfather on his balcony and let my dear second husband imagine, God forgive me, that I was smiling at him. And yet, he should, he should always be ready to have a perfectly terrible scene whenever we want one and to become miserable absolutely miserable at a moment's notice. Well, now they're in heaven, all three. And I'm almost sorry I worried them so. I never travel without my diary. One should always have something sensational to read on the train. If everybody's like you, a love story would soon be over. Matrimony ought never to happen till after other adventures. After all, God promised men that good and obedient wives would be found in all corners of the world. Thankfully, he made the world round.